All right, so today we're gonna do some fender flares on a second gen Camaro. On this side, we've already pretty much completed one. Uh, we've got to weld it, do a, a cut in on the fender itself so it's all one piece. So right now it's just put on with Clecos, but the fender flare itself is all one. We have these really nice pieces that we had uh, lasered out. So we have the wheel opening itself is exactly what we want. And I've also marked center line on here and we've etched in a line that we're going to tip this edge for the uh, the lip on the inside here. But before we do all that, we're going to basically form it to the fender and then we're going to do some standoffs to kind of hold that lip in place. You can kind of see them hanging in here. <clears throat> so it kind of shows you, you know, where that lip needs to exist, where the tire is. Um, also, once we have the lip and the stanchions in place, we go ahead and turn the wheel lock to lock to make sure it's not going to collide in any direction and we get our full turn ratings. Alright, so again we got this laser etch line and we're going to run it through our Mittler Brothers tipping die here and we're going to go ahead and tip this edge. So it's going to turn the corner on this lip that we're trying to do here. Uh, so here we go. So I'm DA in the edge here around where the flare is going to land so that uh, when I get ready to weld or I can mark with a sharpie, you know, I'm not just marking on the black paint here, it's actually on bare metal and I can see my sharpie line really well. And I can also go back and forth from the other side that's done and translate lines on here that mimic the other side and also when I I'm clearing the metal so I can tack stanchions on to hold my lip out the proper distance away from the tire. So right now we've got our uh, supports and the trim ring out here, the, the fender lip ring kind of where we want. Uh, basically we transferred a lot of measurements from one side to the other. Um, every couple inches we put a support so it's pretty stiff and uh, you know having a lot of the main part of the fender still there so we have you know some rigidity here also helps with that um, I made a template of the first flare piece so this is the driver's side and I always mark center line and then we'll just flip this over and this is just, you can use butcher paper. Uh, we have a paint shop here, so we use paint paper for masking like an apron. So, you know, this is kind of a general outline here. And you'll see I have a border here. This is where I tip the edge so it'll lay flat on the fender and later we can cut it in where it'll be butt welded in to the fender itself. But, you know, we have center line here, which we've, you know, marked and a center line down here. So I mean, we're kind of, you know, roughly in the in the correct spot here. And obviously, you know, you're going to have a stretched portion in the center with an English wheel, and that's how we're going to do that. So we've cut our piece out, and we're going to we've done a little bit of English wheel work. Um, if if you look at the the other flare, we have this really great Trick Tools piece here. Uh, it's basically a, a radius gauge and what we'll do is, you know, we have a, a 24 radius which you can see right here and basically we're trying to match that 
and we're pretty close most of the way it's got a little bit left and we're just going to try and get that throughout the piece and then uh, we'll go ahead and draw a line across the top here and we'll tip that edge so we can manipulate that edge to uh, graph into the fender so it's just kind of a seamless butt weld that we're trying to create so we're going to go ahead and uh, roll a little more and then we'll check our radius so when you're wheeling you want to kind of keep your strokes tight and try not to cross hatch it you want to just kind of be line on line kind of like if you're painting you know you do like a 50 percent overlap this is something very similar to that you want to keep your lines very close together so you don't stripe the panel you know you, and you don't want a lot of pressure at first you know just kind of work it back and forth slowly and you'll start to notice you know you can feel it and you don't feel stripes in it like when i feel stripes you feel every line and that's you know where the english wheel touches and that's what you don't want because that creates a lot more body work later so like i said light pressure more strokes and keep your pattern close together and you don't have to work the whole piece at once you know you see a lot of guys and they run it through the whole way you don't necessarily have to do that um, you can just work half and half or you can work different sections you know depending on you know your ability to work the panel and how you keep your your striping you know sometimes you'll look at it with the gauge and you just have a spot in the middle that needs a little more shape so you can just work that one spot it's important that you don't want to like stop and tip it you know you want to kind of guide it in and out you know nice and smoothly because when you have a start and stop in the middle of the panel sometimes it'll leave kind of a, an impression mark and that's why I say you really want to you know glide most of the way you know into the panel and out of the panel you don't want to you know apply pressure to the panel at all you know let the wheel do the work I left the panel a little long you can see the line here uh, it's always better to make your piece a little larger so you can cut it down when you're ready to actually install it and I find that the end of the panel where it meets the the lip is always good to leave it a little bit long uh, it helps you kind of contour it properly when you get it actually to the car because everything's always just a little bit different you know from one side to the other Yeah. Okay. So now that we've kind of got our shape throughout, and it's at a, you know, like I said, the, the I think it's a the 25 radius. <clears throat> You know throughout the panel we're going to go ahead and tip this edge and basically we're going to start the tip you know we'll probably run it through maybe two or three times and we'll just kind of increase the pressure a little bit at a time and then we're going to take it over to the car and we're going to kind of set the the angle up because it when it you know if you've ever seen the second gen camaro fender it kind of rolls from the top and then it has a different gradual radius down the side of it even in the front it narrows so we're going to get a general tip on here which will make that corner a half inch in uh, fairly weak so we can actually use a hammer and a dolly and tip it more or less to meet the fender where it's going to lap over nicely and it'll blend through so we're going to go ahead and start that tipping process now So you can tell when we set this up here, we have a nice transition up here at the top. 
but when you get over here it doesn't really flow as a as the flare to a flat you know so we've already done our tipping edge through the bead roll die so what we're gonna do is I've set up one of the fingers here on our uh, our box and pan brake and so what I'm gonna do I use the shortest one because we're working on a radius and working on a radius uh, you don't want a giant flat spot you know to try and tip over you want a, a very short section so what I'll do is I've, I've marked out a line here and I'll basically set it you know incrementally down the line and I'll hold this flat and then I'll tap on this short edge and I'll get it to tip over a little further until I get the contour here so it, it goes from a flare to the fender and the this half inch edge here, this border, will actually set flat on the fender itself. <clears throat> so we're moving a little bit at a time and you can see you know the difference and how things move. You can see the major difference here to here. <clears throat> and we'll just kind of slowly move up and down and not hitting it hard but hard enough to manipulate it <clears throat> so we can check our changes as we go. So you can see the difference here to here that we're more plush and actually parallel on this corner and it's still moving in at, a, at the incorrect angle on the lower section here. So again we place the line that you see here on the blade here of the finger and then we just tap on it I'm holding the hammer way back here I'm actually holding it closer to the top so I don't create a lot of swing force and you manipulate very slowly um, if you try to hit it hard and you hit it in the wrong spot you'll put a dimple or change the shape down here or change the shape in the, the flange itself. Another way to make your swing on a hammer more accurate is to place your finger closer to the, the head. Even if you're swinging with a, a long swing, if you swing with your finger on it, you're going to be more accurate. pretty flush all the way up and down there's a clear distinction of where the flare starts and where the fender starts <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and do the other side here and then we can get to figuring out where our end trim point is Okay, so right now we've kind of fit the two pieces together and I began tacking. So if you'll notice on the weld here, we're doing every half an inch. And what we do is we get the fitment where it's nice and flush and then we can, you know, it feels smooth as you come across it and there's not like a big step, you know. So the gauge is 18 and it's, it's smooth across it. So instead of just welding it all the way across, what we do is we actually tack until we have a full weld across. So we go every half inch and then we'll come back and do every quarter of an inch. You know, so basically you stagger in between these and then you'll come back and fill in the rest. And then we'll grind a bit, we'll hammer and dolly, because every time you weld something it shrinks. So what you're going to want to do is put the dolly behind the weld and then you get that ring noise. And when that ring noise means that you're directly over the dolly and that's what gives you the stretching 
So that will bring the panel back to where it belongs when you uh, do the hammer and dolly work. All right, so we've started welding out and doing a lot of grinding on the, this edge out here. And you can see that our seam on the side, you know, from the upper to the, to the lower sections have all been welded and metal finished out. Uh, we've still got a little bit left to do on the front. And then we'll start our metal finishing spot where we just use a, a sanding block and try to find our highs and lows and try to bring everything to a nice, smooth, uniform look. Right now, we got everything welded and kind of DA'd everything down with a 36 grit. It's pretty rough and it's on a DA, so it's not like you're grinding everything. It kind of takes the majority of the grinding marks out. So we're gonna use a blue die to kind of show us where the highs and lows are. And then we're gonna use a, a block with some 80 grit sandpaper, and that'll kind of show us more of what is a standard level and what's low and what's high. And then we'll hammer and dolly our way to something a little more consistent throughout the shape, and that'll give us a better start when we get ready to do our uh, body filler. 